so I love the word of God today. Amen? And so this morning, amen, would you just pour your heads and your hearts at this time? Father, we are grateful for this occasion. We are grateful for this opportunity. You have lent us life and we are using it constructively, oh God, to be in your house and be educated in your word. I pray that you will, oh God, give us audible ears and receptive hearts, oh God, that as we hear, we'll apply and we'll be that which you have called us to be. We come against the forces of darkness, every spirit of, oh God, of slumberness and distraction. We push it aside this morning and call for the spirit of attraction, oh God, and attentiveness, Lord, to envelop your people that as we listen, we will go from strength to strength. Bless each and every one of us today as we leave ourselves in your care. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hallelujah. God made it possible for us to have a library of books during our time here on earth. Amen? Amen. And so I will generally sing this little song when I go to uh, speak on children, when, when it's children or youth in action. God gave us a special book, the Bible is its name. Be will all 
always worship you. It really was a joy to come and see the children performing today. That tells me that the church is alive and well. Our future is bright. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. We have got dancers. We have got uh, those that are reciting, those that are singing. Amen. Glory, glory to God that are still passionate about the things of God. Somebody praise him. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. The church today is alive and well. We have just gone through the Lenten season, which reminds us that our God is not dead. Hallelujah. He is alive and well. Last week Sunday was Pentecost Sunday, where we celebrate, amen, the coming of the promise that Jesus sent after 10 days, after his ascension. Glory to God, the Holy Spirit came. Glory to God. And listen to church, it is no more a promise. The power is here for the church to do what he has called us to do. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And so today, amen, the text speaks to us from St. Luke 5, 1 through 11. Amen. Matthew also carries the story in Matthew 4. Mark 1 carries the story also. And St. John 1 carries the story. Amen. Where Jesus, uh, Simon Peter, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And I want to use for my topic today, Jesus calls Peter to follow him. Amen. Jesus calls Peter to follow him. Is he calling boys and girls to follow him today? Is he calling teenagers? Is he calling adults and senior citizens? Yes, he is calling every one of us to follow him. And I really want to uh, applaud, applaud Antipat and the Sunday School, amen, poor of this local church who are molding lives for Christ. Amen? Praise the name of Jesus. So we see the Christian teacher touches, uh, touches life and brings a measure to people that are spirit message, sorry, to people that are spiritually dead. Amen. We just celebrated Teacher's Day and I applaud every educator and teacher in the secular realm today. Amen. But there's a difference with the Christian teacher. The Christian teacher touches life and brings the message, amen, to those that are spiritually dead. Amen. We carry a message that transforms lives, amen, and brings restoration. Amen. Understanding our role as believers, Jesus commands the believers in take Matthew 29, 19 through 20, says, Go in therefore and teach all nations. Amen. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Verse 20 of St. Matthew 28. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Just tell the neighbor, he's with you. He's with you. He is with you. And the first thing that pulls out from that great command that God gives is the call for every believer to obey. Number one, the Great Commission is the call for every believer to obey. The word go is very forceful. Amen. It is not a suggestion, rather it is a command. This command is given to the believer and then a promise is made. God said go into all the world and then he said sometimes. No, he's not with us sometimes. He is with us always. In our childhood years, in our teenage years, in our young adults years, in our senior citizen years, amen, he is with us always. Right? And so the promise he has made that he is with us always, this indicates that your obedience to go will unlock God's promise to be with you. Amen? So God promised to be with you. Another song that I love to 
saying is that I'm a promise. I'm a possibility. I am a promise with a capital P. I am a great big bundle. Let me see all those that are, uh, have a promise this morning that they are going to be anything that God wants you to be. Amen. Amen. I have a young lady in my congregation. Some years ago, she went to Money Teachers College and she graduated. And when she graduated, she gave her father the certificate and said, Daddy, you wanted me to be a teacher. I have completed my course successfully at the Money Teachers College. No, you are going to help me to be what I want to be. I want to be a registered nurse. Oh, somebody help me, praise God. But do you want to be anything that God wants you to be? We are saying to our children and our teenagers today, I am a promise. I am a possibility. I am a promise. With a capital P. I am a great big bundle of potentiality. But the word of God said in Acts 
Acts 1 and verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit is come upon you and you shall be witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and in the uttermost part of the world. So he's saying to us, when you go on your work program, when you visit your children overseas, when you go on mission trip, when you go on assignment in different parts of the world, take the good news of salvation with you. Somebody praise God. When you go to the hospital, when you have an appointment with your gynecologist or your specialist or whoever, amen, glory to God, take the name of Jesus with you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have got a global mandate. We are not limited to Jamaica. Glory to God. The world is our mandate to take this gospel of hope to men and women that are dying in sin. We see when power comes on you, it doesn't matter who is in front of you, the Holy Spirit power will overtake you and you will have no limitations. Amen? You will not be afraid to talk to your teacher about Jesus. You will not be afraid to talk to your staff about Jesus. You will not be afraid to talk to your grown children about Jesus because of the experience that you have had with him. I heard you sharing a testimony of the miraculous power of God. You can't keep silent. Amen. Because God has been a miracle worker in your life. Somebody praise him. And the third thing about this commission, notice the word teach is mentioned twice. Amen. Praise God. Once in verse 19 and once in verse 20. He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And guess what? Lo, I am with you always. Our job does not stop at going and baptizing, but we have a duty to teach those who we have one. And so the teaching arm of the church is very important. And, and sometimes when I hear people talk about Sunday school is not is for children. Sunday school is not for children. Sunday school is for the entire church. It is the teaching arm of the church in which we are able to grow. Amen. We are able to answer any question that an individual asks us about our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. He said it's not just to baptize. Amen. Hallelujah. To reach them. But to teach those you have won to observe what you have been taught. Amen. We learn that when we give, he gives back to us. How does he give back to us? Good men, huh? How does he give back to us? Press down. How does he give back to us? Shake him together and run him over. Amen. Sometimes God does not give us that money, but He gives us strength. He gives us life. He gives us children. He gives us grandchildren. Amen. He gives us property. Amen. He gives us a good eyesight. Glory to God. There are so many blessings that God has given us. And most of all, the plan of salvation. Amen. He paid the debt. He did not owe. We owe the debt. We could not pay. We needed someone to wash our sins away and Jesus came and paid the price for our sins. Somebody love the Lord today. And so 2 Peter 3 verse 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men come slackness, but he is long-suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should have everlasting life. All should come to repentance and accept him as their Lord and Savior. Amen. And so Jesus calls Peter to follow him. Amen. When I received the invitation from the church, I, I was praying and I saw the word grace. And I said, God, I'm so grateful for your grace. Your grace and mercy brought me to. I'm living this moment because of you. I just allow me to thank you. I want to thank him and praise him to your grace. Oh, somebody 
help me. Your grace. I should have died. I should have been crucified. But because of his grace and his mercy that has brought me through. And so I'm really thankful that I'm at the right place with God's people to celebrate. Amen. All that he has done and is doing for the body of Christ. So when we look in the scripture that was read from say Luke chapter 5 amen where Jesus proved to Peter amen that he is not an ordinary man we see this chapter records the powerful story of how Jesus called his first four disciples and what are their names Peter Andrew James and John and when I look at this congregation today, I see Jesus still calling men and women to the mission field. The church still needs teachers. We need secretaries. Amen. We need lay pastors. We need choir directors. We need choir members. We need intercessors. We need musicians. We need more persons on the praise team. The dancers, some will be going off to university and relocate in different communities. So we need more persons to keep coming in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So a disciple is a learner. Amen. There is lessons that we learn every day as we journey in this Christian path. And so Jesus called Peter, Andrew, James, and John. And so we see this story first shows how Jesus went to where these men were. Amen. Jesus did not wait on them to come to church, but he went where they were. He went into their business place and used their business as a platform to preach God's word. Amen. So every business person here today, you can use your business place to tell somebody Jesus loves you. They may not make it to church, but they will make it to your business place. So you have a responsibility. Tell them Jesus loves you. Not only did he preach, but he demonstrated his power by working a miracle that would greatly benefit their business. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Children, what did Jesus do? He showed how easy life could be with him in their boat. So what Jesus did, he told Peter later on, Amen. Praise God. As verse uh, 3 said, and he entered into one of the ship, which was Simon's, and pre prayed him that he should thrust out a little in the land, and he sat down and taught in the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Peter, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a job. God is still calling boys and girls, teenagers, men and women to launch out into the deep and experience the miraculous power that he is releasing in the world today. Hallelujah. We see in the same way Jesus went and called these four men, we are also compelled to go to do the same sort. Notice Jesus taught the people from Peter's boat, but then he took Peter deeper to show him a miracle. Hallelujah. When I started studying the scriptures, I realized that Jesus had 12 disciples later on. He started on with 70 and so many, amen, and so many left him, but he focuses on 12. But within the 12, he had an inner circle. And the inner circle experienced some things that the others did not experience. And when I gave my heart to the Lord, I said, I don't want to settle to be an ordinary Christian. Oh, somebody help me. There are more some things that there, there's deeper, deeper in the love of Jesus. Daily let me go. I am higher in the school of wisdom, more of grace. Amen. Hallelujah. There were some things that were deeper that God wanted to show Peter. Oh, if you can give me my boat, I must release a blessing upon your life. If you can give me your life, if you can give me your time, if you can give me your finances, if you can give me your family, I will release 
gives it back to you. Hallelujah. 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 And so Peter, hallelujah, was obedient. Because the first thing to follow God, we have to be what? Obedient. Obedient is the very best way to show that we believe. Believe is an action word, you know? Hallelujah. You can say you believe. And you don't do anything. Believe is an action word. So when Jesus told Peter to go launch out into the deep, he toiled all night and he thought nothing. He could have just sat there and said, Jesus doesn't know about fishing. We are original fishermen. Amen. But you obeyed the word of God. You may be in the church today and you're sick. Don't you know that he is the God that healing thee? He is the Lord, our healer. He sent his word and he healed our disease. He is the Lord, our healer. He is our provider. He promised to do it, supply our need according to his riches in glory. Are you willing to go deeper in him that you can experience the miracles that you want to demonstrate in your life? He's waiting on your obedience. Because Peter was obedient, he experienced the supernatural. Today, God is sending us to those who own business, not just to those who shop there. He is giving us the ability to take the people who is sending us to into a deeper relationship with him. Deeper yet I pray. Hey. Who do we go? 
about being fish. Ask your neighbor. Let them tell you. I'm not going to tell you. Amen. But I believe the small fish are our children. Now, at one point, Jesus said to Peter, Love is told me more than a fish is. I want you to feed my sheep. Not only feed my sheep, but I want you to feed my lamb. I want to take care of these small hearts, these little tender plants. Amen. I want you to take care of them, mold them, and nurture them, that they can be a blessing in this world. I remember I was in fasting some years ago. Before God called me to ministry, I was on three days fasting. I was listening then to the, 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 the no more sheep topic message from Juanita Bailam. And I said, God, whatever sheeps are in my life, whatever is hindering you for, 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 for me to go deeper in you, I want to lay it off. And I spent some time in fasting and prayer, and God spoke to my heart and said, I'm rising you up to take care of tender plants. And I saw a small, at that time, we used to use bar pal. Now these children know about washing machine. But for the senior persons, we know about wash tub. Anybody know bar pan or wash tub? The bar pan is the zinc one. And you may have cut it. No more like I'm a Jamaican you come from. Yes, ma'am. And we sow the pepper seeds in there. And I say to people, if you have land, you're not supposed to like pepper. Do something other. Plant some seeds, no man. Plant some corn seed or some pepper seed. Amen. So you can benefit. Amen. From the soil. And as the Lord spoke to me, I went before him. Amen. And I remember going to convention that year and they brought me in as a discipleship, as the youth director. And for seven years I served in that capacity and then 15 years as discipleship minister. For 23 years I had camps. I served children all over Jamaica and traveled to other countries. Amen. Uh, sharing this gospel of salvation. We are called to win big fish and small fish. Don't despise teaching these Sunday school children Sunday morning by Sunday morning. You are sowing seeds that are lasting forever. Amen. One of the songs we used to sing during harvest time, so flowers and flowers will blossom. Around you, wherever you go, hallelujah, because Jesus is coming to reap the harvest and you reap whatsoever you sow. So we are called to win big fish as well as small fish. Intimidation and fear are what blocks us most of the time from pursuing those we deem to be wealthy or high in society. But Jesus is for everyone. Hallelujah. Jesus is for everyone. And as I looked on the, the, the theme, uh, Jesus calls Peter or summon Peter to follow him. Amen. And as the story continues, uh, glory to God, we look further on also that Jesus was walking and he saw Matthew at the seat of custom. And that story blows my mind. As he was walking, he said to Matthew, uh, come Levi, come follow me. What did Matthew do? He get up and he left all and follow Jesus. So we a long time for the call, you know? A long time pastor asked for him to do something. A long time the Sunday school superintendent, anti-pack. A long time he asked some persons to come and assist in the Sunday school department. To assist with the, the, the beginners. To assist with the juniors. To assist uh, some of you are trained teachers. You can come and give up your skills and your talents. Uh, hallelujah. Jesus is calling you to a life of service that is meaningful. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. And what Levi did, he got up, he left all, and he followed Jesus. Not only that, but he put on a party. And you see, all of my teeth in friend, we want them to come to the party because we want them to see the change in my life. Oh, somebody help me, praise God. I want them to know that I have come in contact with Jesus. You never come in contact with Jesus and be the same. Oh, somebody. Some people don't want to testify where they're coming from. Hallelujah. But I was nothing before Jesus found me. Amen. If you take Jesus out of this own life, nothing will leave. Oh, somebody help me, praise it. So give me Jesus in the morning. Give me Jesus in the evening. Every minute of the day, give me Jesus. Can I talk to somebody today? He's my reason for living. He's my source of survival. Give me 
traveling from 24 hours now. My flight has always been delayed. And guess what? My son have one child and she just died. Uh, they are married. My son is just excited. And the child vomited. And the vomit choked the child. I held that mother's hand and I prayed for her and reminded her that the Lord is with her always. Hallelujah. Lo, I am with you when you go to death. Oh, somebody help me, praise God. Lo, I am with you when you have been threatened by your child or your children. Lo, I am with you when you are financially in your financial challenges. Lo, I am with you when you are going through your health challenges. Lo, I am with you when you have got land and house and all kind of problems. He promised never to leave us or forsake us. She said, I don't know whom to face him. I said, with the grace of God, you're going to face him and offer him hope that is going to carry him through this situation. Got you any river that seems so uncrossable. Got you any mountain. You can't tell the truth. God specializes in the things that are impossible and he'll do for you today what no other friend can do. At the time of visitation for Peter, he was not in a season of success. He was struggling and toiling. Many business people face uncertainty in the global economy right now and some are in jeopardy. God, can God send you to demonstrate his power and win them for his kingdom? Yes. The opportunity will come for you to be an answer to a business person in their most vulnerable time. You can offer them hope. I know the Lord will fix it for you. Hallelujah. If you just hold to his arms and be led by his command, I know the Lord will fix it. He will give you that strategy and that business idea. Your business can excel and bloom again. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. Things can turn around in your life because Jesus is alive. And we see today to be effective, we must be filled with the Holy Ghost to demonstrate God power in those favorable moments. I'm not talking about tongues. Because a lot of people have tongues and have no power. They have tongues and if they see one lizard that come, they're gone. They have tongues and they see one cockroach that come and they're gone. Hallelujah. But I'm talking the power that comes from God to change the impossible into possible. It is no secret today what God, what's your secret? You may not tell me, but there's a God who looks on the heart. He knows what is happening. He knows your request. And it is no secret. What well, just like he turned it around for Peter. Oh, somebody help me. He can turn it around. Somebody said, Do it again, Lord. Do it again. Send a revival. Revive me again. Revive the church again. Many are longing for the spirit to move. Do it again, Lord. Do it again. Hallelujah. I hear the praise team singing. Amen. As I walk in, glory to God for the power of God to move in the church again. The Holy Spirit is the pulling power and the compelling factor that, that when it comes to winning soul. According to Luke 24 verse 49, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry me in the city of Jerusalem until he be endued with power from on high. God tells us where his power comes from so that we can face the challenges of this world. So we can go to the big fish and the small fish and tell them about Jesus. Amen. I hear a preacher say on Wednesday night, we always are called the youth revival. We need some old people revival. Because we are some old people, unforgiving, and bitter, and wicked. We always are called for youth revival. We want some old people revival. That they will turn. This lady, he was saying that his aunt, Lady Agavis, needs some food in the dish. And because the dish come back crap, she not tap to her for years. 
Oh, somebody help me, praise him. Oh, God Almighty. Before she dash with that dish, touch your neighbor said, go to a new dish one. Touch your neighbor said, just go to a new dish one. It was some people die and they have some gift for them to own yet. You have some things in them. Are you me at all? Come on, you go and with me today. Are you me at all? You have some gift. You have to God that you get that is in the buffet that you don't use yet. And you me at all. Take them out and eat out of them. Jesus will come. And stop quarreling with you one glass for your husband break. And one glass for your son break. And it's something for your daughter break 20 years ago. You're still happy to find a car to work. Are you me at all? We want some more people to fight. The word is not only for the children, it's for the teenagers. Oh, God Almighty, we are living in a world where our gender, Lord God, is in trouble. God created them male and female. But you have some virtue who have no gender. God didn't make a mistake when he created the human race. Amen. As you look on a man, you know, say, my man. And if you don't want to know when it happened to us, take off your toes, eh? Man a man, touch your neighbor and say, man a man. Man, God create man. He create man. We look like man. And if you don't know if you are man, take out your clothes and let me tell you if you are man. <laughs> oh, God Almighty. God create us different. Hallelujah. But because of sin. Because of sin. Because of sin. Man want to do their own thing and expect God. I want you to sit back and accept it. But the preaching of the gospel will soon be over or over the world. So our responsibility as discipleship arm of the church, the Sunday school, is to teach the world in season and out of season. Hallelujah. So that our children can grow and be what God wants them to be. I'm almost done. According to the status quota at the time, Jesus was seen as an ordinary man, though he was the son of God. Hallelujah. He was just an humble man. Oh, going around, ministering to the needs of mankind. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, suffer the little children. He was teaching all day. Yes, that the disciples were compassionate. They were concerned about it. You knew physically he was exhausted. And the parents were taking their children to him. Ah, he said, Go on out of yard. I want to where I come from. Man. But Jesus has suffered the little children to come out. You have some women with food to listen. And sometimes when some people are fruitful, they criticize the woman they were fruitful. And you may talk, I know all of this at church. You know, that at the church. Because some people are fruitful every year they have one baby. Ah, God Almighty. But celebrate with them. Come and want them on the dance group. We want them on the choir. We want them to come and read the scriptures. Glory to God. We want them to do exploits and mission trip for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So they looked at Jesus. Amen. He was Joseph's son, just a carpenter boy. However, who he was calling was the best society had to offer regard, regard, to offer regard qualification. Because in that time, fishing was a great job, very expensive. Because that was one of their main course meal. Amen. And to be a fisherman, an expert fisherman, it means you are rich. And I believe Peter have a fishing company. So he have a lot of people working with him. So when the Bible said they were going to the house of prayer, and the, the crippled man said to Peter, uh, give me. You don't have anything to give me, Peter? Peter said, silver and gold. And because he didn't have no money, he leave him purse. Oh God Almighty. Hallelujah. He leave him wallet. He was a professional fisherman. He had money. He said, silver and gold. But you don't really need money. You need an encounter with God. Ah, God Almighty. Silver and gold have I known. But such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Somebody need to rise on the position of complacency and get busy in ministry. Somebody need to rise from your place of complacency and answer. 
and invest in before she leave this hurt. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. If we do not go to them and preach the gospel, how else will they surrender? You must have this money they hear about Jesus. Oh, you know, did you tell them? How oh, did you know that the person hear about Jesus? The only proof, man of God, is Brother Henry, right? The only proof that you know that your neighbor hear about Jesus. And when you tell them, you have to tell them that Jesus loves them and he cares. Don't leave it to Pastor McDonald. Don't leave it alone to Auntie Pat. Don't leave it to my sister with my surname Russell. My maiden name. Amen. Don't leave it to Brother Thomas or to Sister Boone or to my teacher down there. Amen. You need to tell somebody about Jesus. Because there are some people that you are going to reach. I will never reach them Amen. in my lifetime. Amen. So don't take the opportunity when you go to the ambassador. I just stand up out there uh, for two hours. I was preaching in a tent crusade and I hear the Holy Spirit said to me uh, two weeks ago, some of you can't reach the church early, but you can reach the embassy early. Right. And when church was over, sister said, Pastor, the word reached me. I had an 11 o'clock appointment at the embassy in Kingston. She lives in St. Elizabeth and she reached there after eight. She said she lived next door to the church in St. Elizabeth and she can't reach her church at 11 o'clock. She said, Pastor, it pierced me like a dagger. Don't you know that the word of God is quicker and powerful and sharper than any? Don't play with God. And he's a jealous God. Give to God what is due to God. And give to Caesar what is due to Caesar. If you can get up and motivate your children to go to school, put the same effort and motivate them to come to church. It's going to work it after all. It's a lifetime investment for God. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him would not perish. It's not everybody that you talk to will be saved, but keep teaching. Keep talking. I remember we were having a crusade some time ago in Upper Clarendon, and for 30 days we went to that crusade, and my neighbor uh, rented a car at that, that time, and every night and every night I'd invite him to that crusade, and he said, Tomorrow. Tomorrow, and the crusade finished and he went home. But we were having a youth Sunday service like this. Somebody praise God for youth Sunday. We were having a youth Sunday service. Hallelujah. And I invited the national youth director at that time to come and speak. But we have a, a rainy season. Uh, it was early June. Amen. And there was a weather that the rain beat uh, miserably in Christiana, and he couldn't get to come. And I hear the Holy Spirit, because you did the Bible quiz competition, there's a word in your belly, share that word. If I perish, we study the book of Esther. If I perish, I perish. But you must be the king. And he came to church and gave his heart to the Lord because I was persistent to tell him, don't give up. You may be doing it 10 years. You may be doing it 20 years. You may be doing it 30 years. You may be doing it 40 years. You may be doing it 50 years. Somebody will just have a start next week. I'm about to do a funeral for a member of my church. She's just 36. Two weeks before she died, I walked over to her under the power of the Holy Ghost. And I said, you need to volunteer to do something in the church now. She said, Pastor, okay, the praise team leader. Who is the praise leader in the church? Who is the praise leader? God bless you. Where is the praise leader? Oh, she's not in. God bless the praise leader. And so he said to me, the praise leader asked her to sing on the choir and she's going to do it next week. And guess what? She showed up on the praise team that week. The following week, she was sick. And her mother said, why don't you stay home? She said, no, I promised past and I promised the praise leader that I'm going to volunteer to serve on the praise team. She came to church, sir. She was feeling so sick, went back home. She died the next Sunday. Don't waste time. Don't put off what God called you to do today for tomorrow. Many things about tomorrow. I don't see. I don't see to understand. You know what it feels like me as a pastor to commit a girl just surfacing so much potential. She graduated from one of those noble institutions with a robe and her 
certificate, she didn't even get to work back that money that she studied with. She bought her handbag. She said to me, Pastor, I'm about to travel for the summer. I've already purchased my ticket and purchased my handbag. The mother said to me, Pastor, when she took her things in the handbag to the hospital, she said, Mama, where are carry my handbag? Mama, my handbag for the her. Didn't know that she wasn't going to marry, make it to the great America this year. When God called you, answer him. Hallelujah. You are called to reach people from every walk of life. What is your life? What is what is on your life is going to compel people to come to Christ and you will be used as a mighty evangelist to fill God's house. God is depending on you today to impart knowledge to these young people. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To let the beauty of Jesus be seen in them. What do we have today? The good news. If you turn the television on, you hear bad news. If you go on the internet, some of you walk with the observer on your phone and every news you hear. And so many news are bad. Why are you keeping silent with the good news? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, amen, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And the eternal life begins right there. What a blessing. Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.